reflection evening. It's good that you have joined with us. And I do not have my microphone on. Hold on just one second. Okay, that's probably much better for you for hearing. Uh, again, I say welcome. It is good uh, to be with you on this evening of the election of 2020. And tonight we want to just have a time of prayer, uh, not for any particular candidate, but a time of prayer for our country, a time of prayer of healing. We want to begin this evening with a prayer, let us pray. Loving God, we gather to praise and worship you and to pledge to you our loyalty and our service. Bless our gathering and our remembering, our hearing and our speaking, that all honor and glory may be yours. Bless us that we may be a blessing, a blessing to you, to our community, to our nation, and to our world. We ask it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Verse 10, the prophet Isaiah chapter 41 says, Don't fear, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will hold you with my righteous, strong hand. You know, Election Day, a ritual that here in this country, we have the privilege and the honor to participate in once every four years, to elect the leaders of our country and some other some key positions. And sadly, what we are often attempting to do is to elect the Messiah. We want to elect the one who in the next four years will save us from all the wrong in our society. We want to elect one who will make everything right for us. And you know, even as Christians, we can become really wrapped up in this process. We can become very passionate about one candidate or the other. And in and of itself, that is not a problem. We should be passionate about who the leader of our country will be. But we should do it by doing our research, knowing what each stands for, knowing their ideas and their opinions and, and what they plan to do to take America farther and what they will do for the well-being of the American people. You know, for the last several elections, I don't think it's been as much about communicating what the candidates believe and stand for as it has been about tearing down the other candidates. And if that's not annoying enough, beginning in, the, in that last election and becoming just full-blown in this election, it's been about creating fear of the other candidate. Fear of what will happen to us if we elect this candidate or the other candidate. And it's actually become a pretty effective strategy to the point where Americans, even Christians, fear what's going to happen. That's not the way God would have us to live. The first prayer for the night comes from a book called Gorillas of Grace, Prayers for the Battle by Ted Loder. And as we pray this prayer, may you reflect upon yourself about how you may have become entrenched in fear of the other. Let us pray. O oh God, O oh God, 
It is hard for me to let go most times, and the squeeze I exert garbles me and gnarls others. So loosen my grip a bit on the good times, on the moments of sunlight and starshine and joy, that the thousand graces they scatter as they pass may nurture growth in me rather than turn into brittle memories. Loosen my grip on those grudges and grievances I hold so closely that I may risk exposing myself to the spirit of forgiving and forgiveness that changes things and resurrects dreams and courage. Loosen my grip on my fears that I may be released a little into humility and into an acceptance of my humanity. Loosen my grip on myself that I may experience the freedom of a fool who knows that to believe is to see kingdoms, find power, sense glory, to reach out is to know myself held, to laugh at myself is to be in on the joke of your grace, to attend to each moment is to hear the faint melody of eternity, to dare to love is to smell the wildflowers of heaven. Loosen my grip on my ways and words, on my fears and fretfulness, that letting go into the depths of silence and my own uncharted longings, I may find myself held by you and linked anew to all of life in this wild and wondrous world. So I may take to heart that you have taken me Psalm 146 tells us, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the wicked ways of the world. The Lord reigns forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. You know, the good news for us as Christians is that our hope, our identity, isn't in a political candidate, not even in a political party or a form of government. Our hope, our identity is in Jesus Christ. You know, we can go to bed tonight, even if we don't know, who our next president will be. We can still go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow with the same hope that we have always had. We can go to bed tonight and sleep peacefully without fear because our hope, real hope, not the kind that's wishful thinking, but real hope, that knows Jesus Christ was crucified, died and was buried, and was raised from the dead, and he ascended to the right hand of the Father from where he rules all creation. Tonight, tomorrow, for the next four years, and for all eternity, our hope is in him and his rule. 
You know, I have no idea who will win this election. But you know, there's one thing that I know for sure. No matter who you voted for today or in the previous few weeks, you are going to be disappointed. Yeah, no matter what, you are going to be disappointed. You know, if your, your candidate isn't the president for the next four years, you're going to be disappointed as soon as you see the results of the election. You know, you're going to start out disappointed. But if your candidate wins, you're going to be all excited. But sometime, sometime within the next four years, you're going to be disappointed. Because no human being can fulfill all of the hopes and dreams that we put on them. It's just impossible. We cannot elect a Messiah. The Messiah has already come. The Messiah has, with his own death and resurrection, made the provision to save us from all that is wrong. He has already made the provision to make things right for us. He made the provision to offer us a full, abundant life, full of love, of joy, of peace, and of hope. The sure and certain knowledge that he will be with us no matter what happens. No matter what happens in this election, no matter what happens for the four years to come, no matter what happens beyond, our hope is the certainty that he is with us. Let us pray. Well, God, we we do thank you that you are with us. God, we thank you that our hope as Christians is in you and you alone. You are the one. You are the one that will bring us through all of the messes that we as humans make. You are the one that can restore us. You are the one that can restore our country. You are the one. You are the one and the only one that can fulfill our longings. You are the only one that can fulfill our hope. And God, we just pray tonight that our hope is in you. We know that both of these candidates who are running for president, God, they they, we pray, have the best intentions for our country, that they have the best intentions for the American people. But no human being, no human being, is up for the challenge of always doing things right. No human being is up for the challenge of being all to all people at all times. And God, we, we just pray for those who will be elected today from the president all the way down to the, the local positions. We pray for them. Give them strength. Give them courage as they lead us. God, give them wisdom. Give them discernment. We pray that they look to you for guidance. And we ask for forgiveness for them for the times when they don't. And God, we pray again for ourselves that we look to you for our hope, that we don't place our hope in another human being, that all of our hope is placed in in Jesus' name, amen. And then from 1 Timothy,
chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Tonight, or in the morning, or whenever it happens to be that we learn who our new president will be, that we learn who our new leaders will be from the top to our very local leaders. May we remember that right here in Scripture, you know, Jesus, as well as Paul here in this letter, and even other writers, tell us to respect our leaders. You know, we're told to support and to pray for our leaders. You know, messes happen. Big messes happen, as we are seeing now, when we let this division come among us, when this group refuses to work with that group, and that group refuses to work with this group, and we just let this big division come between us, and it gets wider and wider and wider, and the mess gets bigger and bigger and bigger, as we see now. So may we, after this election, may we as Christians be the ones who first start coming together, united, united for the sake of our nation, united for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we are able to proclaim him. Because division not only makes a mess within our country, but it makes a mess within the body of Christ. Let us pray. Oh God, we know there is great division within your body. Oh God, we know there is great division within our nation. And God, when this selection is over, may we join together to pray for whomever is elected. May we put aside all of the ugliness of the past, all of our attitudes of the past. May we come together in unity as Christians. May we come together in unity as Americans. May we come together to fulfill your purpose for us as individuals, as congregations, as your church, the body of Christ, as our nation. May we come together to fulfill your purposes. Help us as Christians to be the leaders of those to, that come together, that promote unity among people. Help us to, to no longer, help us to no longer participate in the divisions but help us to reach out to those who think differently, those who have different opinions, different attitudes, different ideas. Help us to reach out to them, that we may come together, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And again, we do lift up all who may be elected tonight. God, we pray for them again. Give them strength as the leaders. Give them courage to lead us. God, may they follow you. And may we continue to pray for them, not just tonight, but may we continue to pray for their leadership of this country, even when they do things we don't like. May we continue to pray for them. And may we continue to pray for the leaders of the church, 
because we know too that they often don't do the things that we like. They don't always do the things we want them to do in the way we want them to do it. But God, we pray. We pray for all leaders. We pray for all leaders to discern your will and to lead in that way. In Jesus' name. And our gospel from this evening comes from the gospel of John, first from chapter 13. It's verses 13, 34 through 35, which says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. May we remember that command of Jesus, love one another. Love one another. You know, the command is not to love those who agree with us. The command is not love those who take the same political stand as us. But it's to love one another, even those who are different. You know, we're not to tear down those who believe or voted differently from us. We're not to tear down any of those who were elected today. But we're to love one another. Now, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, he had a word for the people called Methodist. October 6, 1774, he wrote, I met those of our society who had votes in the ensuing election and advised them, one, to vote without fee or reward for the person they judged most worthy, two, to speak no evil of the person they voted against, and three, to take care their spirits were not sharpened against those that voted on the other side. And then at another time in a sermon that John Wesley entitled Advice to a People Called Methodist, he said, Condemn no man for not thinking as you think. Let everyone enjoy the full and free liberty of thinking for himself. Let every man use his own judgment since every man must give an account of himself to God. Let every man think, for every man and woman must give an account for themselves to God. From the Gospel of John 17, verses 21 through 23. <coughs> This is Jesus speaking. I pray they will be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. I pray that they also will be in us, so that the world will believe that you sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, so that they can be one just as we are one. I'm in them and you are in me so that they will be made perfectly one. Then the world will know that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you loved me. You know, now that the voting is over, we have this tremendous opportunity to show the world how the love of Jesus Christ works. And this prayer that Jesus prayed for the unity of his followers is such a big opportunity for us. It transcends racial and political lines. The love of Jesus Christ is stronger than anything that divides us. You know, may we remember in the days to come that we are primarily, first and foremost, citizens of a different kingdom. 
first and foremost, before we are citizens of the United States, before we are Americans, we are citizens of a different kingdom. A kingdom where love prevails over all things. A kingdom where all divisions are overcome. A kingdom where there is peace in the midst of all turmoil. And there's hope for all the hopeless. There's joy in the midst of despair. There's love for all people. Let us remember, first and foremost, above all things, we are members of God's kingdom. We are Christians, members of the body of Christ. And our purpose is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And the way we do that is by sharing his love. You know, the world has called us to the voting booth to decide which candidate should run this country. And God is calling us to be united with one another, to share his love with this country. So let us put away our differences, our disagreements, our distinctions, our dividing lines. And may we come together as the one body of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Oh God, there is brokenness in our lives and in our land. There is division among us. There is anger and bitterness. During this election season, in some way or another, we have all participated in the meanness, the deception, the harsh accusations. But Lord Jesus Christ, we know you are the way of peace. Help us to repent of our wrongs and to choose your way of reunion and renewal. Come into the brokenness of our lives. Come into the brokenness of our land with your healing love. Bring your healing into our nation. Bring your healing into our churches. Bring your healing into our lives. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, melt our hard hearts and consume the pride and the prejudice that separates us. Fill us, O oh Lord, with your perfect love. That love that is unequaled by any other love. The love which casts out our fear and will bind us together in that unity which you share with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And God, we offer you all praise and glory because we know with you there is forgiveness, there is mercy, there is grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And as we now go, from this time of our scriptures, our meditation, our prayer. May we go in the spirit of love. May we go in the spirit of unity. That we may be hope shining in the world for the hopeless. We may be light in the darkness. That we may go helping to heal the division that we may go loving with the love of Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.